Hello and welcome to our discussion on autonomous driving. Gentlemen, the uh, Society of Automotive Engineers defines six levels of autonomy. In your mind, what's your, what's your thoughts on five years out of the most important one coming in? I think that the most important ones moving forward in the next five years are probably level one, uh, mostly due to the affordability and accessibility. Uh, of course, you don't want to take away from level four and level five because they're really going to be pushing the limits on what's possible for less self-driving cars. Yeah, I completely agree with that. If you look in the U.S., somewhere between 35 to 40,000 people are killed on the roads every year. Um, you look at the opportunity to really go impact that, that those, those statistics are huge. And it's really going to be those, those much simpler systems like the level one that we can really drive mass amounts of deployment uh, to really make an impact on saving lives. Yeah, and I think if you look at uh, laymen, if you ask them, four or five is where they want to be, right? But we also see where uh, one through three kind of need to, to, to advance to get there. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, of course. So level one to three, those are going to be covering a lot of the more simpler cases. So for example, just keeping a car within a lane, that's an easy way to prevent a lot of accidents, very common accidents as well. Yeah, and to that point, um, you know, lots of people I've talked to also that aren't necessarily in the industry are scared to death of a car driving themselves. But when you start talking about a level one, level two, automatic emergency braking, and the car actually braking half a second before the human and taking away that power in an accident, I think has a huge potential impact. And I think it's, it's pretty exciting to see what could happen there. When we started uh, kind of in this journey or this road to autonomy, cameras played a important part. Um, front camera is one that's uh, a little more prevalent now in vehicles. Can you uh, kind of go into some details of how it fits into the levels of autonomy? Yeah, of course. So front camera is, is basically required for level one, level two functions like lane keep assist, um, some cases adaptive cruise control as well. Um, and of course, moving forward, that is basically going to become the eyes of the computer driver as well as it is looking forward just as we were as we were driving the cars. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at the modalities of all the sensors that uh, are available or the technologies that are that are on the horizon, any thoughts on the comparisons between them or even how they work in conjunction with each other? That's a great question. And really, when you look at people doing high levels of autonomy, there's no agreement on what modalities are going to be required, how many modalities are going to be required. Um, it's a factor of what each modality does well. It's a huge cost factor. And what's going to be the right balance of modalities uh, to, to have the safe driving experience? Because when you start talking about more and more autonomy, you're also talking at raising some pretty serious safety questions. Mm -hmm. And you've really got to be thinking about that from a modality point of view, from a car architecture point of view, from a redundancy point of view, from the electronics that are in the systems and the software. It's, it's a complete package. When we look at sensors and having two or three validate each other, I think that's kind of the, the goal, right? So um, obviously there is some ASIL or ISO type of, of, of uh, thoughts going into the designs of these, of these sensors. Any comments on that? Yeah, I think you're, you know, that's certainly an area that there's lots of continued thought uh, advancement going on, and I think it's, it's really important. Um, you've got to be thinking about how, you know, first off, how do you deal with the corner cases? And how do you run enough corner cases around enough, around a sensor set that you actually ha create that really safe driver environment? Then you've got to go down to how do you actually architect the systems? Right. Uh, what redundancy is going to be required? And redundancy also adds lots of cost. So, you know, you've got to deal, balance all those to be able to drive affordability for, for it to be deployed in a massive environment. And that's a real challenge. Yeah. Yeah, and I could see where affordability plays a, a big part, right? Could you uh, go with one sensor or from an affordability standpoint, put three or four that do basically the same function? Mm -hmm. So as these, these systems become more complex, sensor fusion becomes a, a big play into that. Can you comment on how sensor fusion is gonna uh, change the level of autonomy in the vehicle? Yeah, so in order for a car that's driving itself to make reliable and safe decisions, it's gonna need a very accurate picture of its environment. And the way to do that is to, you know, put sensors around the car and capture that data. Mm -hmm. So once that data is captured, it needs to process that data effectively. Mm -hmm. um, so that in and of itself is a challenge. The processor is going to be processing about gigabytes of data very quickly, and that processor is going to be very hot. 
So that in and of itself poses quite a challenge for the market. I think that's a great point. <laughs> but I also think it, it's one of those areas that we're going to have to have a lot of innovations for. Because at the point now of just throwing more performance, uh, throwing unlimited memory, unlimited power, uh, isn't really sustainable when you start, start talking about wanting to deploy in high volumes. Mm -hmm. I think that's really where it gets down to, at the end of the day, these are going to be highly embedded systems, very real time, are going to have to care a lot about power. Uh, and we're going to have to carry about total cost. So I think that that's going to be a real interesting area of innovation as we start trying to figure out how we can get the pr these price points in a deployable place. And you can't simply throw MIPS at the problem, right? As, as our electric vehicle uh, counterparts were talking about trying to get more miles out of that charge, uh, those types of systems, as they're taking more power of it, basically equate to miles being driven or could be driven, right? And the good news is there is, you know, these are problems that we can start putting different forms of processing against to help make that power problem get a lot better. And I think if you look at today, what's uh, available to the masses, surround view systems, uh, the assisted parking uh, type of systems are, are pretty prevalent. Do you see a tie-in between it and the autonomous driving going forward? So there, I think that's possible. Um, there's a good chance that you could use those sensors, uh, dual function. You know, you could probably improve the accuracy of different drive functions, um, but that's a tough call to make at the moment. And I think right now we're going through lots of learning in the system, right? Once we get more learning in, there's gonna be opportunities to integrate, but we've got to, to go through those learning processes. Yeah, and I think that's, that's fair. So we've talked a lot about uh, the sensors around the vehicle. What about the sensors inside the vehicle? The one that gets me most excited, um, both from an autonomous vehicle point of view, but maybe even more so as a dad, is driver monitoring, mm -hmm. right? And just the, the impact that, that we can make sure that drivers have their eyes on the road. Uh, you look at the fatality numbers, you look at how many of those are caused by distracted driving. Mm -hmm. um, I, to me, that's a really exciting potential safety adder. Then you start thinking about that in autonomy. And studies have shown that if you're not paying attention, it takes you 10 seconds to be able to drive a car after the car says it's not able to drive itself. Um, that's not feasible in a real world environment. So how we work through and how do you keep the driver alert as we're going through these different levels of autonomy is going to be, is going to be key. Yeah, my thought there is, is if you have a you know, deep learning algorithms as all those sensors are bringing in, you still have that one individual that's been driving a vehicle for many, many years and, and uh, watching them and their expressions or, or their heart rate could really give you a good idea of something effectively dangerous is coming on, right? So it could almost act as another sensor in the system. Very good, great discussion on autonomous uh, driving and, and the future of it. I really appreciate your time. For more information on autonomous driving or ADAS, please click on the link below or go to ti.com forward slash autonomous.